um, which is a workshop led by our head of design, John, who I will let introduce himself, and is about building the perfect landing page for your business. Something that you should start as soon as possible, but we'll get on to more of that later. Um, yeah, John, do you want to introduce yourself and tell us a little bit? Because they don't normally get to see you when they see me too much. <laughs> uh, yeah, of course. Yeah, I'm um, good, everyone. So, so my name is um, Isioma John. Uh, I'm a UI UX designer and a Webflow um, developer based in Lagos. So, um, yeah, so I generally like to design amazing stuff and um, improve user experiences and make um, mobile apps and literally anything that works on the web more appealing to users. So, um, yeah. How did we meet John? How long has it been now we've been working together? Flex is. Uh, uh, yeah, I think we're working together for more than a year right now. Yeah, I think yeah. it's a year. And, yeah. Through so a random weird. Twitter. I, I found we came, yeah, yeah, true. I, I, had a client, I had a client who needed some who was being difficult. And I told them I was hiring a Webflow expert, mostly just to make them be quiet. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me I was some stuff. And I just randomly wrote on Twitter. And I had a few yeah, others. It's um, been great ever since. So. Yeah, it's been fun. Um, cool. So the kind of, uh, I'll let, I'll, I will shut up at some point and let John talk. But uh, we're just going to start with a little kind of just general chat and go through um, the, the hows and whats and whys of building a landing page. Because I know that it's come up a lot. Uh, in terms of that a lot of people don't think about it, and they start uh, too late, I would say, in building their landing page. Um, one thing we always tell clients when we're kind of doing our development stuff is that while we build your app, <laughs> this is now your chance to go away and, uh, or to, you can have John do it for you too, but um, to build your landing page and to start getting subscribers and signups and waiting lists and, you know, it's kind of free time. So, um, yeah, I, we will then dive into some of the more practical stuff. John's going to show you around uh, his um, preferred development uh, tool of choice. And let's maybe start with that. Why do you, you use Webflow for all of our stuff. Why do you use that over like Wix, you know, Weebly? There's a few others out there. What should yeah, like you need to think about? So I, I think one of the one of the biggest like advantage or joy of a designer is seeing that these exact designs get replicated the exact way you designed them or wanted them to um, come out. So my before I started using Webflow, I tried WordPress, I tried on Weeks, and I think I tried Squarespace as well. And they all had the same issues in terms of design flexibility. It was very limited, extremely limited. And my biggest issue with WordPress in general was with the use of plugins. So, I mean, you use a plugin today and then in few weeks time it's asking you to update. And generally the use of multiple plugins on a website just makes the website heavy and then crashes. So easy. what are those, what are the plugins used for when you're saying plugins? So you're saying like with Wix and with Wix and with Squarespace and whatnot, they have optional plugins that are not developed by them. Is that it? I know that's the case with WordPress, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Optional plugins that are developed by like some external companies, and then you would have to integrate that with Webflow. Like for WordPress, for instance, you would have to use a plugin for a form because things are simple as forms and just multiple plugins for like sliders and all those. So, yeah, it's it was yeah, my biggest issue with WordPress. But with Webflow, right, we have design flexibility, we have control over the content management system, the CMS, we have um, control over some of the um. Um, elements like um, input elements like sliders, um, forms, and all that. These are, can be customized literally anyhow you want them to suit your designs. And for me, that's the biggest plus. I mean, design flexibility. <laughs> that's the joy of every designer. When you said design flexibility. What exactly do you mean by that? By design flexibility, I mean not being restricted by the tool to express yourself fully, right? Imagine I. So when I used to use WordPress, then I always try to um, design to match the strength of WordPress. Right? You know that you can create this form in a particular way because it's almost impossible to replicate this sort of form on WordPress. Right? Or well, Webflow, I don't think about uh, constraint of its treatment. Right? To design, I just design out of my head as long as it's um, as long as I feel that this is going to be the best solution. Right? The design, and I just design. Then with Webflow, I'm sure that I can always implement whatever I design. It's that's and is it as easy? I mean, because obviously WordPress is an older technology, right? Like I think yes. it was one of the first kind of word. And then you have the newer ones, which are like Wix uh, yes. and then Squarespace, right? Um, I mean, have you? I've used kind of all of them a little bit. There are also, I mean, yes. there are yes. like a hundred yes. other ones out there. But um, are they all like, if you were going to compare and contrast, which is the easiest one, I guess, and like which is the um, what's the most difficult? Because Webflow is kind of it's the newest, right, of those? Yeah, yeah, it's pretty much new. 
Well, uh, to, I'm, I'm not. I'm, I, I think Webflow does have a bit of a learning curve, to be honest. It really does. Uh, and it's it's so, it's probably because right, you need to have like a probably like I mean to learn it better, you need to have like a background knowledge of HTML or CSS. Just the basic stuff is definitely going to like um, increase the pace at which you learn um, Webflow. But again, it's still not compulsory for you to have like background knowledge and all of these things. It's pretty much, you know, um, like if you're coming from a design point of view, right? If you're coming in from a UI, UX designer point of view, right? And you're very familiar with like the Figma layouts, with auto layouts, with the grid systems. It's pretty much the same thing, really. And what if you've really? never built a website before? Would you still recommend that somebody goes straight into Webflow? Or should they, would you, would you, are there some people that you would say, you know what, no, for you? Not yet. <laughs> uh, to, to be honest, again, I, it, has, it does have a learning curve. So you really don't need any background knowledge in any other tool if you really want to learn web flow. So that's it. So you really, you just think um, it should take like a month or so to get familiar with the layout. And then you could start literally building simple stuff, not the complex stuff yet, right? The simple stuff that could help your business gain traction, like a simple landing page. You don't know. You could probably not probably like start including all of the advanced animations yet. But it could be something simple at the moment, so it wouldn't be two weeks of constant practice, really. It's that simple. Well, obviously, if you want to start including like the advanced animations, um, like multi step forms, mega menu drop downs, and all those kind of stuff, you need to get a bit more practice and more familiar with like Figma, HTML, CSS, because then you'll have to be applying a lot of methods like adding div blocks, um, max container width, and all those kind of concepts. But again, for a start, you just really need to go onto YouTube. They have a very, very beautiful community on YouTube, uh, the Webflow University. And then they give you basic stuff and knowledge on how to get started with Webflow. And it's really very helpful, especially for beginners. And so what if, I guess the, the way I look at it is that yeah. the website, um, while you see it as a work of art, me as a non-design a a design challenge person who's not very graphical, I see my website as being functional, right? Like for exactly. me, it's all about a purpose. So I have, I, I suck up Webflow now, but um, in general for me, I see it as a sliding scale, right? So uh -huh. on day one of your business, you know, you've just said the phrase, well, after, after a month of learning to use Webflow, <laughs> the, the, then you can do this and this. Uh, but on day one, I don't have a month. I've got, I need to get going now. And so I don't know if you've ever used this before. This is often what I recommend to some people in terms of building a landing page, right? Because that's what ultimately what I think I agree with you. Webflow is by far the best choice. <laughs> it's the most yeah. secure. It's the most reliable. It produces the best looking websites. There's a reason that people are moving in there and that we ask any client that has WordPress to move to Webflow because <laughs> <laughs> because Webflow WordPress is just a nightmare. But I think since we're talking here today about just like landing pages in general, advertising your app, your business, um, the there is it's okay to change. I would say that's one of the things about no code, right? It's uh -huh. I mean you built how long did they, you built our Flexbird's landing page? What like forty eight hours? <laughs> Probably. I think I lost you, John. Well, I'm going to talk to myself while John reconnects because I know what he would say. John built our website in about 48 hours. He can build. <laughs> he also does crazy fast. He's obviously very experienced with it. Oh, you're back. Yeah, sorry. Uh, actually, <laughs> so sorry. That's okay. That's okay. I was just saying that you built our, our FlexBridge page in like a few days, no? <laughs> yeah. I'm yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. I'll do that. <laughs> Yeah, so like the, the more familiar you get with the uh, with the interface, the more easier it is for you to do stuff. And I agree with Joss in the sense that card is a much more. Um, have you you've used card? Yeah. Yeah, in terms, yeah, I've used card a couple of times as well. In terms of building like straightforward or simple landing pages, and they look good too. That's the thing that I like about it is that yeah, they don't it's, they it's, don't it's, look it's, like uh, I don't know. You like dark uh, dark websites, so I'll, I'll choose this one. Right, you like the dark theme. I don't. Yeah, that, that. And also, always like most no code stuff, these things have free trials normally, um, which apparently I'm going to have to do because it's again going to make me in order to see this template. Um, but when you're using a when you're using a tool like this, like these are not these are good looking websites, and they achieve even this one. It already has what you really need on day one, which is a yeah. sign up form. 
and it's going to offer you a whole bunch of different options. All of these note we use, I like Mailer Lite personally because it's not so heavy. It's also super cheap. But so just to actually start collecting people and tell people about your business and getting them on your social medias, this is enough. And you can get your domain. There's You don't have to wait for the perfect website. You can do it very fast in Webflow as well. But one of the great things is I think that there's a range. What you can't do is go to WordPress and come back. That's an <laughs> You can, but you're going to go down. You know, I think that it's the, the days of like website migrations and stuff being this massive like thing that takes six months. It doesn't take six months to build a landing page. You no, can build a landing page and achieve your business goals in like a day, you know, uh, even if you've never done it before. It's just about, so don't, I would say, don't be afraid to try and to, uh, to get going. But if you are wanting to build the perfect, perfect landing page, as you develop, there are definitely more things you can do in Webflow. And I don't know if you want me to screen share, John, or you want to, but. Um, oh, yeah, you, I, I screen I share. share. Fine. You want me to share? Um, yeah, you can. Because the next thing I kind of want to talk about was the other thing is templates, right? Yeah, uh, exactly. Templates, I think, sometimes have a bad reputation. I personally have my feelings on them. But uh, what do you – would you recommend to someone starting out to – especially if they've never used Webflow, to use mm -hmm. a template? I mean – Yeah, so the thing about templates or my issue with templates sometimes is the fact that if you're extremely, like, new to Webflow, right, you wouldn't, you wouldn't be – you wouldn't find it easy to edit elements on Webflow. You wouldn't find it um, very easy to understand because some of the layouts and the naming conventions that I might use might be different from the ones you're familiar with. So, again, it's always about, like, um, uh, your business needs, really. If you want a simple landing page, extremely something really, really simple, there are templates to suit that needs, right? But sometimes uh, you need to also be able to find the right tools to achieve such purposes. Like CAD, for instance, is a great, great tool, simple enough for you to understand and use mm -hmm. So, yeah, and I also know that I think that card also has a very good marketplace for simple landing pages again. So, you card is always I didn't, know, I didn't know that. I mean, yeah. my kind of thoughts on so typically Webflow templates range from like I think there are some free ones. There's actually a really good, um, not to get distracted on a tangent already, yeah. but uh, is it Flowbase? Is that what it's yeah, called? Flowbase, yeah, Flowbase. Flowbase is really cool, and they do actually have some uh, free Webflow templates as well. Uh, and also free components, which we'll get into more what we mean by that. Um, it's very different than a plugin. But um, the my thoughts on templates is that templates always look better than what I could build myself because I don't have your kind of, your skills. And it, they provide what is, I think, for me, most important, again, from day one, is like that look and that consistent look and feel. And they save you from kind of, uh, you know, tearing your hat. So for me, for $29 to get like a simple one, they go up to normally about $79. But again, that's normally not necessarily what you need on day one. But they have all the animations they have done. I think I agree with John, though, in that it is, he finds it, I think, frustrating because you can do stuff with it. Because once you try to, what I've been frustrated with is trying to take a template like this, let's say, right? which is a really complete template and looks like it should have, you know, loads. I've just picked this one at random, but it's not some, um, it, it looks fantastic. My problem is I'm always thinking, okay, now I can just adapt this. And that's not necessarily the case. Once you start trying to adapt it, if you want something different, I think that's where templates really become more frustrating than helpful because you're kind of like locked in. But if you just want to get something up and live, a template and with Webflow, you would buy this and then you literally are just filling in these blank spaces. Um, and But you're, the result is you're getting something that looks just super modern. This could look like any commercial website and you've done it in a day. And I don't think that's a bad option, to be honest, especially if you're looking to do things like, you know, have a blog and whatnot, all of that will already be set up for you. But you just need to make sure you are able to pick one that is as close as possible. Maybe the, the colors normally are kind of easy to change. Yeah. But you'd be surprised. Like sometimes the colors they're choosing, you've got your brand colors and you realize you don't have five brand colors. So I would say go with simpler templates that yeah. are like two colors. Um, <laughs> those are generally easier to adapt. And then as few gradients as possible. <laughs> yeah. uh, once you have gradients, or you just, unless you're a designer or whatever they're going to be harder to change. And then, yeah, you have to obviously come up with, that's the thing. I, the other thing I'd say about templates last thing is that they a lot of times look prettier than they really are. 
a lot of the stuff is you end up finding out is images and it's not like for instance i don't know if this is or not you maybe do is this whole thing an image yeah i think that's an yeah. image exactly so this is actually a large part of what makes this website look good it, are these like are these really beautiful images and so while this you'll be able to change the color of you'll then have to come up with your own asset for the image so yeah, that's one thing just to be aware of when you're building these landing pages um now the last thing before we dive do you want to talk a little bit about structure like um how you like the general principles because that is important for a landing page right mm -hmm. yeah so uh, for, for me right i like to name all my classes um properly right i mean because i think even if you don't know how to like edit the structure of the website by just looking at the classes alone you can figure out what each of those div blocks or elements are doing so your naming convention needs to be consistent throughout the entire website. You just so um, users or generally anyone that comes up to the website that doesn't have an experience of workflow or anything like that could be able to look at it and then understand what each element is doing and all that kind of stuff. So naming convention is very important. And that's why sometimes, like Joe said, it's always easier for you to choose the template with legs design. Yeah, that's the one thing I love about the templates is that I am not an organized person. And to have the, when we, get a little bit more into the designer john will talk to you more if you don't know what classes are but essentially uh, in one sentence i would say that, yeah it's like the, the the organization of your of your website that was not a good explanation but um <laughs> but the nice thing is to show you is this an example like every element on a website has a a class and john will talk more about this but basically when you buy a template one of the nice things is that they're going to be named perfectly and they also come with like normally a style guide. Um, and that style guide is gonna be, maybe this one doesn't. But, no, this one doesn't. Oh no, admin, here we go, style guide. So normally the, the pages will come with a style guide and the style guide is A, what you can use to change it into your colors. Um, do you wanna explain a little bit about how they would do that? So again, it just it just basically with the use of classes. So the moment you change a style guide that is attached to one class, with respect to probably something like color, right? You then yeah, so if I wanted to change this, how would I go about that? Like, let's get back to basics here, <laughs> just to dive right uh, in. So this is the class, right? On the on the right hand side, this is what you're talking about. Is this? The, yeah. I don't know why my screen is like not too big. There we go. Is that better? So yeah, the name of this class currently is color block. So that's the name of the class. And, and what does that mean? Because I can see here, I, this is what you're talking about, right? This this, this descendancy, you know? Yeah. So, so how does it work? I've never understood. You, um, so basically, you add an attribute to a div block to do a specific thing, right? So if you're going to name it, um, so like you can add also combo classes to the rest of those stuff, which I would explain later. So it's basically um, attaching um, a particular style to something, and then you could use that design throughout your entire website view. So in other words, when I go ahead, this class is the color black, right? And I, yeah, I can see exactly. that there are 14 things on this page that use this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And because this is blue, I know. So if I go ahead and change something about this item, essentially to put it to green, my favorite color. Yeah. It, so it, it that then is going to be changing everything that's like related to that, right? Exactly. Yeah. It does change it. everything that has that class on it. It changes it to that color. I'm curious now what the other 10 things were. They must be somewhere on here. But with the, as you see with this template, you get it really nicely laid out. And this is great if, again, you're looking to go right now, you may only use one page, with just hello, we're coming soon. But if you then want to grow, giving this over to someone like John, a designer, um, normally when you're buying templates, they often come with Figma files as well. Figma is a design tool. Um, and that's going to mean that you can in the interim, still have great looking websites, still change it to customize to you. And yes, you're gonna be limited, but in the future, it, has, it means you have a solid foundation to work from. Um, all right, what should we, um, in, I, we didn't talk about structure, that was the other thing, sorry. When I, uh, so classes are the technical structure. Do you think yeah. about, I know when you're always talk, you always wanna know the content before you ever get started, right? Uh -huh. So how do you think about that in terms of I'm, if, if we're talking to someone who just wants to advertise their app, what do they need to think about in terms of uh, structuring that page so that it's most effective? They need to be very straightforward. They need to think about the most important things their app does, basically, the very important things their app does. And when I always tell people, like, when, when you're building landing pages, for instance, you need to be straightforward because the truth is people don't like generally reading 
like reading a lot of text. They really don't like it. So you need to be very straightforward and reduce it, try as much as possible to reduce the amount of text you put. Then include a lot of images because people get attracted to images more than they do to text. And that's include very, very good images about your app, for instance. And then the evil section, that's the first section of your website should contain. So this, uh, right? And when yeah, you so Sorry, I'm going to interrupt you a lot, but just okay. to break it down for people who've never used it. When you're saying section, this, by the way, this template is really badly built because look at that overflow right there. I can't even see the words. So yeah, not all templates are created equal. But um, uh, basically in the Webflow, you have pay the concept of pages. And then normally what you'll have is sections of that page. Um, helpful sections. So John's not about here the first section is what you would call the hero and fun fact 70 percent of people who go to your website will never go past this point yeah this is it this is all they're ever going to see and they're going to make a decision within about five seconds or less about whether they're going to stay or leave so when you're saying be simple a make sure that your text doesn't underflow like this <laughs> but uh, yeah. this is making it very clear what this product is right in one sentence yeah to face it and then how do you think about like critique this this template for me john <laughs> if you were looking at this is this kind of the right amount of text like you've got a, i see a tagline here i've got like my major button and i like this i do like that yeah i like that directing you to the city i mean i think the usage of colors are actually quite good to be fair and um get your personal credit card now that is very important. Text is literally telling you everything they do. Literally everything do, they do. If you want to get a personalized credit card, they are the guys you should come to. It's that easy. And that is why, like, text is literally very important. The usage of text and how you use it. For the, so your evil section, the first section, should contain a very good text that would describe literally everything you do in less than 10 words. Very perfect in less than 10 words. And then it should also contain an image that is going to probably wrap around everything your app does also. I mean, probably not everything. That would be almost impossible, but at least the most important part of your app. And I also think like the test reward and benefits without that just too much text. Two lines will probably be preferred mm -hmm. for my <laughs> Yeah, for me. So and again, okay, there's one important thing I actually do when I'm building website, which I figured out a couple of years back. So I don't use um, pixel anymore when I'm building. I use relative units. And the reason is probably because of adaptiveness. So um, most times you see that when you go to larger screen sizes, like um, a 30 inch screen or something like that. this has a larger screen size. Yeah, 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 you can add a larger screen just to... Um, just to break it even more. So these are what are called viewports on Webflow. And these are essentially, this is what makes your website look either good or bad. So when you're switching back and forth, just like in Flutterflow, if you're familiar with that, yeah. you can see, and I can tell you that right now that this website was designed and they thought just about this. And to be fair, 80% of your website traffic, and that's just true no matter what industry you're in, is going to be looking at your website on mobile. So yeah. and this is where Webflow excels. I mean, I'm not saying that the others aren't. I think uh, Wix and Squarespace, they're pretty responsive too. But this was the big kind of innovation that uh, Webflow really brought out is to build more complex sites and making sure that, because there is just nothing worse than a button being off the page and i'm gonna show yeah. well i hate to name and shame people because especially because i really like these guys and they're a charitable company and they do good work but like their website's built on wordpress and they, they're like a lending company that does millions of pounds of loans i feel really bad now hopefully they never see this but um it wasn't their fault they didn't build their website they were, had some development agency and you see how this like is just flying all over the place are you seeing my oh yeah you do see my screen yeah? like this is just this is what webflow solves no essentially i think john's frozen again but he would agree with me no, um, I'm, not, I'm just looking at how bad this is <laughs> i mean this this is typical of a webflow website it's nothing personal it's just what i happen to have in mind is that everything from like how this this is not this is what we mean by responsive design is as I'm dragging it around, which obviously people don't do, but people do have different screen sizes and you wanna make sure that your customers are seeing the right information. And these all of a sudden, way too early in my opinion, it just jumps and this looks, it's, it's not how I would design it. And it doesn't, the thing is, the reason this is kind of a good example is these guys do are not reflected by this website. They are being done a disservice by their website. And they have a successful business because their product is so good, but 
they're being hurt by the website. I mean, I, I think so, wouldn't you say? Yeah, well, it doesn't, you see it, the it doesn't, look, it doesn't look very good at all. It looks unprofessional. And unfortunately, yeah. in this day and age, when it's so easy to build good looking websites, I don't think there are any excuses for that anymore. <laughs> you don't have to, because yeah, so that's what, sorry, I got you off track, but that's what we're talking about when we say about viewpoints is make sure that it looks good. And again, spend 80% of your time on this. The rest is kind of, uh, but I do think that this is the hardest part is this sentence. It's the <laughs> getting what your business that you've worked on for, you put your blood, sweat and tears in down to one sentence. I think that's the hardest thing. Um, but if you can't do it, then how are you going to do it with your customers? You it has to be able to explain to someone why they should care in this first section and get them. And I do, again, I do like that. Uh, get them to click this button, which is all you really want. Right. Um, do you have anything more on the hero section? Uh, you were saying about EM. Just, let's get into the pixels and stuff later. I know you love your EM. I don't know how it works and so maybe I can learn to. Okay. I'll show you. But no, <laughs> I need some hands-on tutorial with that. But should we go through the rest of the structure first? And then we can talk about how you actually achieve it, yeah? Okay, that's fine. So what what am I looking at here? What's this? What would you call that? It seems to occur regularly on the landing page. Sorry, so can you come again? I said this section here, if you still see my screen. Yeah, I can. So this after the hero, what, what are your thoughts on this? I know this shows up obviously on a lot of websites. I see company logos that are not this company. Uh, do you think this stuff works? This, you know, trust building? Yeah, you know, yeah honest, I think it does. I think it does. I mean, I feel like people people like to relate with brands to probably like your, um, with more reputable organizations or companies. It, in a way, it's weird, but it kind of gives trust to people to know that if I've kind of had experience working in reputable and very known companies. So, yeah, I think it's actually nice to probably include a couple of clients you work with in the past or people that use your product. And do you need to ask them first? <laughs> yeah, I, I think it's really nice that you ask. Yeah, I think you, you should ask. Yeah, I definitely think it's only nice. I, I think it's nice to ask. I also think that a lot of the things that you see on websites are a little bit misleading because you're like, I don't think this many companies work with Microsoft. <laughs> what do you think? Do you think it's right for people to ask before they include logos? I think, you should, I think it depends on the concept. Uh, I want we've got a landing page that has the government's website on it, and I didn't ask their permission, uh, <laughs> but. I mean, yeah, actually, it's, I will show that. It's kind of an interesting okay. example. This is not a, it's actually one of our few websites you didn't build. Um, this was built by one of our other team. So you can great, you can critique this one too and tell us how you think we did. This was oh, something we put together yeah. in like a week. But again, I don't like that. Our problem is that I write the taglines and they're not always very clear. But um, we have, we were doing something for, to offer like internships to kids. Um, so this one I think is good. I, I'm happy with that. Yeah, this uh, stuff is good. A little bit too much, nice tagline. But yeah, these aren't. This is an organization we were working with. This is the per government scheme we were talking about. This is just the name of the benefit system in the UK. But it's you had to be a part of this in order to apply for that. And then this okay. is the government department. So I've essentially just turned our content into three logos. I I feel this is legitimate. The website is about that. But I definitely did do it deliberately in a way that. It's maybe a little bit misleading, you could say, but it's not. It, we were doing something for that. Uh, <laughs> um, I'm gonna. I, I got bored of that other template. Should we keep going through this one? You can tell us what you think. I don't know if you've seen this much. I mean, this is an old one. Um, what is this kind of after the trust section? What do you think of uh, these? What's going on here? Why have we included this? Do you have other things? Yeah, this is a pretty decent section. I mean, it's. Um... Yeah, it's informative. Really, I I do. I, I think um the images are way too attractive to and are taking away attention from the text. So really, probably, yeah. yeah. It's, do you agree? They're too it's, bold, no. Yeah, yeah, too bold. So it's taking a bit of attention away from the most important thing, which is supposed to be the text. So maybe this could probably have been like reduced a bit. But aside that, I think it's really quite important. Yeah, so I, important. Think you're, I think you're right. I think that because essentially, when you're making what's called normally a feature section, which is mm -hmm. typically three things, right? Um, yeah. This is your three selling points. So if you've got people, again, 70% of people are stopping right here. Um, this is all they're looking at. They're either leaving or staying. The ones that stay, they're going to make it blow past this or whatever. And then they're going to get to this section. And this is your chance now to essentially close the deal, right? And also, we should have a CTA here. I don't know why we don't. Wouldn't you say? 
Would you put another yeah. button here? Yeah, I would definitely put a button telling them to fill up a form or bin, basically, yeah, something like that. Or something, exactly. Yeah. But essentially, this, I would say, it's a little bit different. Your tagline can have a little bit of marketing and be a little bit more generic while still explaining what you do, um, which this one sort of does. Um, but in this one, this is like your chance to, you need to answer, I would say, it doesn't always have to be a question, but yeah. it, it, what problem you're solving, right? The specific yeah. or who it's. Who it's for and what problem you're solving or what do you think i mean because features they, they can just be, if you just say fast <laughs> like you must have when working with clients you must have seen everything no because no yeah. like, it's like fast innovative excellent <laughs> that's not really very helpful no no it's not it's not helpful what do you think of the best way to think about it i mean i know you're not a words person right you're you're yeah. you're, you're not a words person but I would say, do you think it works better as like features or it really just depends on the company or like? It depends on the company. It really does. It really does depend on the company. Because I think I'm, really, yeah. 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 I mean, I think the usage of words in particular depends on the company and the type of people they're trying to attract. But I wouldn't be building a kid's website and then be using stuff like features. No, it's, uh, I mean, it's way too serious, right? <laughs> so if you're trying yeah. to get some, yeah. So it depends on the kind of company and then the kind of people you're trying to attract to the website. So I'm going to be building a fintech organization and then I want to include words that have to do with finance, like money and stuff, mm -hmm. save your money. Yeah. So for kids, you wouldn't want to use terms that are way too serious. You have to use words like phone, this, and mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, exactly. So it all depends on the kind of company. Yeah. I think that's a thing. I would never, I would, I always advise people because I'm more of a words person as well. It's just to, you can always change it, so it's better to put something on paper than not launch your landing page because you can't think of the right words. Try some words and see what works. But in general, either you can – I like to kind of theme them. So this one is mostly uh, – we're trying to – yeah, do, I mean, it answers the question, do you have what it takes? And to just get some recognition because a lot of this stuff is really just gut in, you know, reactions that people have to websites, I think, rather than that people are not rational when they're looking through a website and deciding whether they like it or not whether they want to engage with that product. Mostly it's just how they feel. So yeah, as John was saying, if you if, if you are having word, if you have a clear demographic that I would say you know uses your product or service, then you can be a little bit more uh, lean into that. But if you actually don't know who your customers are, make sure not to exclude them by assuming that the people who want to use your app are fun. <laughs> they may not be fun <laughs> and they may be your customers. So don't, just because you think you know who your customers are, that doesn't necessarily mean they're going to identify with those words and you may end up putting a lot of people off, um, which is also true with the imagery you use as well. Yeah, um, like I, John always talks a lot about like consistent style making sure that, you know, you don't have uh, um, stock images of people in an office and then uh, cartoons or whatever. And um, we can actually get into that a little bit later too about where you can get good images for free or for cheap. Um, but yeah, I would say with the words, just don't list the features that your app does because those I'm the most guilty of this person ever because I always like to blend everything with flex. Uh, but in general, like, they don't know your product and they don't know that they want those features yet or else they would be buying them somewhere else. So I would say focus on either targeting this type of section at who they are and just getting their attention like, oh, I'm a young entrepreneur. This website is for me or else um, some sort of problem that you're what your feature is achieving rather than what uh, it is or what it's named. Cool. Here we've got a little bit more, a little bit of graphics. What do you think of this? Woo! This yeah, was yeah. made by me. This was copied from Flowbiz, and then changed the colors. But um, yeah, this type of thing. Too much. Are you some this works on the mobile, by the way. <laughs> Challenge yeah. accepted. <laughs> Probably not very well. Um, yeah. So I mean, that's the issue right now with the interaction. It's the fact that I mean, it looks nice on the desktop because you're obviously going to have to overwrite. I mean, but on the mobile, not so much. So you want to probably create a different interaction on the mobile that asks to include body header on the paragraph and probably how to probably reduce that image a bit more. Yeah. So. By the amount of errors in my console log, it does not perform well on mobile. Uh, <laughs> I'm just spitting out errors everywhere. But okay, it seems like uh, I've changed my, let me change my format. This is in the developer tools for anyone using Chrome. This allows you to check. It's better in Webflow, but it's also just a quick, easy way when you look. 
So it looks like on mobile. How does this work? Ah, it's a tap to. Yeah. Oh, but that's nice. That was a nice little touch. It, I think the the hand goes away when you're not on uh, mobile. Oh, okay, cool, cool, cool. So yeah, yeah, that's nice. Yeah. Maybe not. No, the hand is up. I didn't okay, see. Yeah. That. Oh, okay, okay. I didn't see those hands before. No, I think so. But I guess you need because it's working differently now. Yeah, I think I, it's, I guess it's quite no, probably not as bad. So I mean, they're kind of like prompting the user to tap, so which also works. All right, well. Visual indicators. I swear before, because before I was just moving my mouse over and it was, they were flipping, yeah? Yeah. Don't know why that one broke. <laughs> anyway. What? Is it on, on the mobile? This is not on mobile anymore. I thought I was, I'm back on desktop, you know. Okay, okay. If I'm, if no, I'm, I'm like general, like mobile interactions don't have over. So what they do have is tap. So that's why you have to tap on mobile, not over. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. More testimony, another example of testimonials. Um, these are good if you have customer quotes. Um, if you don't get a friend or family member to say something nice about what yeah. you built, it's important to have people you could reference about your product. So, testimonials are always nice. I always you try to use testimonials in my stuff. You don't have to lie, but also if you have your mother <laughs> used your app and said, Oh, you're some very nice app, very easy to use. No, we say a customer. Nobody's gonna know it's your mother, <laughs> and at least you. For some reason, again, these do work. I personally, I don't put any faith in these when I see these websites. I assume they're made up, and I assume you see the same people again and again. Which, uh, yeah, be careful when using stock images, because I think it can look really bad. No, when the when you see images, you're like, I've seen that guy before. <laughs> yeah, I, know. I actually. I and I just thought about it. I actually don't include images and testimony. What I include is the name, um, probably where the what the person does. Yeah, and I think that works. And then the text, because if you're going to be using images, you need to be very, you need to make sure you're not making any mistakes with the images, right? I mean, don't include stock images, like just like Joe said. But I, I've personally seen this guy somewhere before. I mean, it's a very popular. Yeah, story. <laughs> yeah you really don't want to make that mistake. It's, yeah, I guess. yeah. It makes it ends up having the opposite effect, not just me. Exactly. And then I think this website. Wow, this website is really long. For a landing, would you say this is a long for a landing page? We're on now like the fourth section, right? I think length is relative, right? I mean, I fourth section maybe not so much. Again, it depends on the way. You, I mean, I think what makes websites probably appear longer than they are is the way the contents are being arranged, right? It has to be like an hierarchy, right? There needs to be a euro section, then the what you do, a quick section about that, then features, then FAQs, then test, no, the testimonials first, then FAQs, then that's like my bit, like. What I would generally have window my sections to look like, and I think this already even follows that format here. So, yeah, actually, I, I, actually um, I can pull up that uh, that thing that we had for the client, that template layout. Okay, okay, that's, cool. really, that's exactly what you're talking about, right? You just think yeah. of it so instinctively that there's just like a, a kind of set structure for websites, no? Um, yeah. Which once you kind of know it, I felt like when I I know it was years ago, or whatever that. Um, but once you kind of realize it, you can't, I can't see a website without thinking about that now. Um, here we go, Leah. I think it was this one. I don't know where this came from, but, uh, it came from some, I think, master class on building landing pages, which this is not. Uh, so That's what, a, so what John's talking about right there is essentially exactly what we've been showing you. Hero, three features. And then I guess this is what would you call this? This is like a feature breakout, right? Yeah, yeah, big demo features of um, photo offering, something like that. Yeah, so, I wish I could make this larger, but I can't. Testimonials, FAQs, testimonials, CCs. and then they've got, yeah, exactly. This, I guess, is that's an epic, and then like an email capture form. So, and then email capture form at the bottom, and then every would you, but you said I would put, I think you need more CTAs in this, though. No? Is it bad to have too many buttons, would you say, ever? I don't like too many buttons. I feel like if, you, if you're if you having too many buttons, then you need to be sure that they're doing both a lot different things. You don't want to have three different buttons all doing the same things, right? You so, wouldn't yeah. just have a button every 10 centimeters, and then you, know, uh, yeah, you think that's annoying because they go, but what if the user gets lost? I, apparently, I did not design this whole website. Yeah, that's they, why I, I mean, your, your scoring time shouldn't be so much. Like personally, I wouldn't have any more text after the FAQ. I think this has a couple of text after the. I wouldn't do that, mm -hmm. right? So, 
if I want to add more text about the photo, right, I will just take them to a new page. If you have more stuff you want to talk about the photo, instead of trying to include everything on your own page, mm -hmm. that just takes too many scrolling time, yeah. So you say if you if you if you um probably like your photo features are way too long and I'm sure it's going to be a lot of scrolling time, you could probably just introduce a line or two on the home page and then direct them to yeah. the button to read more about that on the new page. Yeah. Exactly. And do you have any per um I was just gonna look at this one just to see how it compares. I feel bad. I should find some That's different crummy website, but it's I can't think of another example off the top of my head, to be honest. Um so let's come back now to Webflow and uh get into some of the more specific. So again, I think we're going to see those exact same things. This is a nice little feature grid, six instead of three. I always think this is too much. I don't like these sections with six. I think it's... Uh, yeah. I mean, I, to be honest, I don't think it looks bad. It looks good. It, it looks okay. And that's, again, you always say that. You always say it looks too bad. That's all you... And I think that's the right approach, no? It's like the overall look and feel, no? Yeah. Yeah, I'm always very concerned about the look and feel. And just how, because I think that's what, and then links to the stores. Make sure all your links work, people. That's a yeah. nice Yeah, link, yeah. Uh, and then, yeah you yeah, see my issue cool. right now. You have two different um, sections directing you to download the app. So, I mean, two, last four different buttons all doing the same thing, literally. So, yeah. Yeah. I see. You mean, yeah. It's, very, it's, yeah, when you just start, you know, just starting out, just sell one message. And then as you grow and more people know your business, you can tell them more. Um, we didn't talk about pricing tables. Uh, what are your thoughts on these? They're obviously, again, it's like the movie popcorn, right? Uh, there's, but yeah, I have my little thing yeah, about that. Pricing tables are very important, but I, I think one of the things that people always don't do about pricing tables is the fact that I know sometimes you probably don't know what your customers want, right? But you should always probably like make a reference to which pricing most users always use, right? And this one doesn't have that. And it's because it kind of gives users a sense of direction. I'm, I'm confused. I really don't know what I want, but I want to use your product, right? So maybe yeah. you should probably tell me what plan you think might be best for me for someone that's going to be a new user. So they should make emphasis on the plan that is most commonly used, which they didn't do right, right here. So that should have I been done. I think you're right. Actually, this is really, there's a few things I would say about this. Like it looks, it kind of looks nice, but in general, it's too many colors here. Because exactly what you say, like, okay, I know credit cards, I know pricing goes from left to right, but yeah. I'm just, I immediately get this reaction of just like, well, what options? I'm tired and bored and I want to go home. I'm going to leave this website now because I don't know which one is John was saying. I don't know which one I should be choosing. And I think that in this case, this would be much better as exactly you know, right. This color on the cards would be more than enough to just, I get the fact that they're trying to brand these cards. As different colors i feel less bad tearing apart this website than the one of the company i know <laughs> um but in general like again it's subjective some people really like red their eye is going to be drawn towards that if some people really like green their eye is going to be drawn to the free option and not where you want them to go i feel like this section it loses control of the of the viewer and you always want to be in control on the landing page you should be you dictating go. what they are looking at when and in this one, I think it's just the only way I can tell these are different is if I really squint and try to read these little things and figure out. And the other difference is essentially on then price, but I want to pay the least as little as possible. I think this is an ineffective pricing table if I'm, and let me see if they have a, let's see if we can find a better one unless you have one in mind. Uh, good to show a good example and a bad example. Do you have one? No, you could check them Pfizer for the uh, order. Let me check for. Uh, they must. I know they have one. I got one here the other day. It's just a matter of finding it. Um, these, by the way, yeah. Just to go through Flowbase, if you don't want to use a template and you're looking Flowbase, they have a lot of free resources. Um, and so to be fair, I'll filter for free. And what these are much more because they have a st consistent. These are actually kind of it's like a pick and choose, build your own template if you like. Um, I think this is really cool. I really like these. Um, because there's still some issues, but at least if they're all from the same website, they generally work pretty well together. I, I just tried to click on a pricing table and somehow didn't click on something else here. Maybe, maybe their website needs some work. Here we go. I think I've lost it again. I can't see. But, uh, no, I'm here. Oh, you're here. You're here. So I think this is a much nice, these are some much nicer examples of what I would think of as being a better price. Yeah. If it ever loads. Um, 
Bip, 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 bip. I guess you can't make it any yeah. bigger. So. Holocaust is sensing is so much better. I like it. And this is what you're talking about, right? See, only one of them stands out. This is what they exactly. want me to buy. And in exactly. typical startup fashion, this one doesn't even exist yet. Yeah. <laughs> and then this one is the free one that I, so at least I don't leave the page. But essentially, yeah. this is the format, no? Yeah, this is perfect for my example. You're trying to make emphasis on one particular plan that's going to attract, especially the new users. Right? And this does that, start of require, straight to the point. You see, it's so much different and much more attractive than the others. This is perfect exactly. example. I was talking about yeah really when you compare the two no when you go back and forth when you start thinking about these things like i mean a, a customer is lost here versus i don't even need to zoom in anymore to know where i'm supposed to click exactly this is <laughs> i don't have to it's not about the price it's just about that's where i'm supposed to click and that's that's where good design can really take you far and you see on all of these no like this one they do have a real third plan you don't always have to have three you can have two but on still on each one Use one color. They do have some secondary colors still, but I still know where I'm supposed to click. Weird that those are the same price. They've got some great examples. And not all of these are free, but I think maybe something you have to get a subscription for. But in general, even this is, this one's a little bit risky because you've got the, you don't know how big their screen is. They might just come to this. And yeah, I always prefer putting them um, horizontally instead horizontal. of like, yeah, vertical, yeah. And they got the month. I don't think I don't. I think that could be much clearer, like a toggle. I'm assuming yeah, that this is the, the top. The top, top main list that will work better for that. Yeah, it's it's. Don't make your user work to um, to to use your website. It should just be that they can be half asleep, and they can use it. Okay, I think that's pretty much. We've gone through structure now. Oh yeah, contact form, which we'll talk about with actually the specifics of um. Don't ask too much details on your sign-up forms. Best is just an email. Do you really need to know their name? What do you think? I think it's nice to know your name because you could you like like the database, right? And all those. So yeah, it's probably nice to know your name. And you also imagine it's, it's 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 kind of like a personal thing. Right? So you, you get your names and then you reach out back to them using their names. It just makes it a bit more personal and it gives the user That's a nice Yeah. And so let's now get, can we dive right into where, this is the most important thing I think, and so yeah, just to make sure yeah. we cover it, is where does this go? How do I do this in Webflow? And I think, let's do two things. Let's show people how to, uh, I'm just gonna sign in quickly to Flowbase, because then I can actually clone a like, contact form module, no? Exactly. If I remember my password. Oh, this is, this is dangerous. I have no clue. But at least I know where to click. Um, maybe that's not gonna happen. Sorry. Well, let's see how their onboarding is. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. How will we make of this landing web site? Is this a distraction on the side? Is it going to get at least notice there's no buttons here? I like that. No, it's not a distraction. It's pretty much an image, by so much. Uh, yeah. I mean, the form is just an image, not a button. <laughs> yeah, no button yet. No, I don't think it's distracting. No. Please don't make me verify. Please don't make me verify. Okay, <laughs> so um, just to show you, these, as I said, are things that you can clone directly, and apparently you can unlock all the components in Chrome. Um, dashboard, they must have contact form, no? multi-step forms, FAQ. Yeah, multi-step forms would be way too complex. And yeah. next year, in future classes, we'll definitely be looking at all those stuff like multi-forms and all that. But yeah, what you'll notice is this is also structure. Their structure in terms of filters is exactly what we were just talking about. So you've got header, content, features, all of those different components. Um, somehow when I click, it doesn't send me the right place, but content features, I swear I clicked on forms, no? FAQ, forms. So that one more time. I'm too click happy. Uh, so any preference? Um, that I don't have to. Pay for. We don't want to sign up forms. We just want a basic form here. Um, uh, oh. uh, yeah, I think I like that one. Can you Which one? Back? Uh, you have to scroll back up. Yeah, duck. Yeah, no, no, scroll to the bottom. Yeah. This one? Yeah, no, the one that. Yeah, that. That looks good. That looks good. It's got a lot of fields. Okay, for sure. I'm in the field. Uh, <laughs> First name, last name, email address, subject. No, nah, I don't. Nice. Think it's, it's, it's okay. not bad. I always don't think subject is necessary, though. But I mean, 
we can well we can show how people can take it out so um yeah the way exactly. that you actually take these into webflow is i believe it's just one click right and then it should take you back to webflow it's gonna make me pay isn't it you may have to choose a different one john unless they have a free trial yeah, I know that one was too good to be fair. I mean, it looked really nice. You definitely have to pay for it. But we can look for one that is a bit more yeah, like, I'm not, complex. I'm not paying for twenty-seven pounds a month, but uh, it is worth it. I have paid before, but now I have John, and I don't need to. <laughs> I don't need to build my own websites. Uh, so let's find one that's free then. Um, this one's free now, or no members? Everything's for members. They must have a free content. I think we buy like um, non-members or something. Uh, community clonables, Webflow, community, they've upgraded their website. So how long it's been since I've had to use this site. Um, what I really liked about the site though is that they were at least all built in the same, that is not the right place. Um, let me go back. Uh, let's find one. I must be able to filter by free now. So forms and content. And if I can't, then we'll just go straight on. Here we go, components. Free Webflow, there we go. Now spend money. Do, 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 do. We get one option, okay. <laughs> well, I guess we're going with this one. <laughs> yeah, we'll take it. <laughs> and when you copy it, paste your component, okay? So it's literally as if you're copy pasting. So if I were to go into, let's just say this, because I don't like their pricing module, and then, uh, this is not my project, right? So I can't edit it. Uh, should I start a blank project or do, do we have one? Yeah, it's a blank project. It's a blank project? Yeah. And then we'll, we're running out of time. Let's see if we can do this in five minutes. I don't know why I left that. Just like your landing page, you shouldn't leave the most important things to the end. <laughs> like I have just done now. But what's okay with it? So if I'm going to go in here, my awesome project. And Webflow, by the way, will also take care of all, your, all of these website builders. They'll always be able to link your custom domain and take care of hosting and stuff like that. There's no need for meaning you get good service and instant deployment. All you have to do is press a button. Um, so with those components, finally, I can just copy it right in here, right? Boom, and I have yeah. a new component. And if I want to make any changes, so this is a forms block. Explain, let's go through how this works. All right, cool. Um, so we have a form lab and we have, um, okay, no, we have a form block, first of all. Uh, I think you kind of renamed some of the structures, but the default structure is the form block and the form block then has a form wrapper, which then has all of the details inside of the form. So each text field, can you click on one of the text fields, just um, the text fields? Yep, like here, yeah. Yeah, and so if you go to the settings, right, um, on the text feed, on the text feed, the settings, yeah. The settings still up here, right? Right. Right, so you could add, um, no, 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 not that. The text feed has a settings button. It's close to it on the top, yeah. yeah Is that that? Yeah. Okay. So, right, cool. so you can add, like, place order text, uh, like, enter your email. If you want to add, like, an mm -hmm. extra text, yeah, just probably, like, for more details and all that. And, yeah, just, you can just change, uh, write something on the place order. Just for the computer. Uh, yeah. Enter email. Oh. Cool. And then you can make that required or not. So if you want, um, you know, you want to be sure that um, you, you want to capture the email field, you want that to be composite, a composite field. You don't want the form to be submitted without capturing the email field. You can also make that composite, right? So, um, and also one of the most important things people do is also the form redirect. So if you click on the form field, you could redirect them to an external field as well submission if you want that. And that's here, right? So these are my options. So essentially yeah. I can see it in three ways, right? So what happens when it's pre-submitted, submitted, and then error. Error message, right? <laughs> and then I can, that's how I go. In. And then this looked complicated. I'm confused, John. What do I have to do here? Uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, uh, basically, right, the funny thing about this interface is the fact that when you're changing, when you're switching between normal, source X, and error, the only thing that is changing is the interface, right? The redirect URL, it's not very, it's not particular to like sources or ever, it's just normal. So if you redirect that, so if you set the redirect URL on sources, right? 
it's mm -hmm. going to take you to different page if you want. Probably like you have a payment page or something. Yeah, you could be always with that. Or just, you know, this is, I always think, the best opportunity. If you're thinking that we're, you haven't, you know, that the landing page doesn't, you know, John selling you write one sentence. I want to tell people about why my product awesome. Da -da -da -da. This is the moment to do it, essentially, because this is the people it's worth telling more about your product in depth. They have really like giving over your email address in this day and age is a big commitment. <laughs> so um, that's your moment where you can start sending them to your blog, to your more detailed pages. And the, as you get more developed, I would say this should be essentially you. This is where your interaction with that customer is your consider them your customer now. Right. So their customer journey, even though they maybe haven't paid you any money, it, it kind of starts from here. So it's not just something that you should throw away and just send them back to the home page or worse still have no kind of like their journey is just over at the bottom of your page. And that hasn't left them feeling great. I would say um, what you want to do is to get them excited about what happens next. Like what, what are you going to give them when they've given your email address? You know, what are they going to get? What is the next thing they need to do? If they should be checking their email immediately, and check them immediately. If you're going to be setting, if you want them to do calendar, but I would say don't miss that opportunity because these people who have filled in their email addresses are showing they're the ones that you've got, you've won, you know? So make sure that they know what's going to happen next and what they have to do as well. Is that right, John? That's my business. Yeah, that's um, what are these different options? Get post, get post for those who don't know. It's always post, right? When would you ever get yeah. a form? No, it's always post. post. Oh, I, okay. I've never used the get. And then the action, do I need to name it something? I just leave that, right? No, you leave that. So basically, the action is probably you want to integrate to, um, tools like cover kit, right? There's always like an ID attribute if you want to monitor the way your emails from are being tracked, users. Uh, so yeah, those fields are probably if you want to integrate with third party email marketing tools, you'd always have to use the um, action, yeah, to set specific action on that. So I mean, well, right now, the email um, webflow form submission directly goes to the default email you use to open mm -hmm. uh, that is associated with webflow. So that's where all of the form submissions would I'll be. I'll show you that. So essentially, in your project settings is where you'll find that. So you don't need a database. You don't need anything more than exactly just this form. And you will start collecting email addresses. And when you get a lot, you can do something with them. <laughs> um, but in general, they will just start showing up here. Uh, whoops, sorry. Under forms, I think you can get like a thousand a month or something. No, I think it's fifty on that for the free. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. if you pay for things more. Um, but yeah, once you, if you don't want them to live in here because you just don't, because there's not much you can do with them, <laughs> you obviously want to move them over to somewhere. I would recommend, and we'll be talking in other workshops because we'll wrap this up, I guess now. Uh, John's like, I barely got to talk about anything in Webflow yet, but that's why we're doing one of these a week. Which day is going to be your day, by the way? Because I know you've got university now. Uh, yeah, I would, I would also probably um, look at that properly and then come look at me. We'll decide, but John yeah. will decide on a regular day where he's going to do this and a regular time that works for him. And yeah. we will go more in depth. And maybe sometimes I won't even show up and he'll be able to actually talk. But uh, in general. <laughs> I can you show up, by the way. Well, I mean, cool. So, I mean, initially, right, your form submission is always like, going to be submitted to the email associated with Webflow. That is them. Um, the email you open your account with. But again, I feel like there are other very great tools that are probably used for tracking emails better or uh, managing your well, emails. Well, you can use this Zapier essentially to connect it to anything else. Yeah, so that, that's so cool. Or you could just in integrate directly with Covert Kit. Covert Kit is really quite very good. I've used that Which as one? well. Oh, oh convert dot, what is it? That Covert one, right? Kit, yeah, Kit, 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 Covert Kit, yeah. How do I spell it? K? Yeah, K I no no Cobots then K K O M V E L T K I T V L T yeah then K I T yeah that okay. oh I think I do know this one yeah 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 I think yeah so uh, it's, oh I've used this before yeah it's like yeah, outro and yeah they have some really cool stuff yeah it's really good I like it also it's it's one of the ways you could always integrate our workflow to probably keep um. Yeah, these ones are awesome. yeah, it's really very good. I really like this. There's, I've, I never had really, ooh, I know what we're doing over the weekend, John. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> these Again, ones are great, actually. 
Yeah, so one of the ways of having a perfect landing page is uh, a, a perfect landing page doesn't always have to have like the most fancy designs and all that. Hey guys, so that it's Olivia. Like... Sorry. <laughs> oh, okay. Hey guys, so, yeah, it's yeah. Olivia from Convert. I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> I'll stop. I'll stop pressing buttons. Go talk. Say what you want to say. <laughs> I'm saying like yeah, I was saying a perfect landing page doesn't always have to have like the most fancy synthesis and all that. The most important thing is clear communications to your user, right? So once you have your evil section explaining the text and details, a few images, you could have a form field as well, and then you could have um good control over your forms by then integrating with third party applications like Overkill as well. So yeah, I mean it's um it's a very great tool for managing and controlling all of your emails, your form submissions that they arrive, and then you can even group them into different categories. Yeah. So it's very nice. I can say this is a good pricing table. I like this. I like that it's clear. Yeah, you, yeah exactly I like what I said. Yeah. Which one which they always refer you to, like the one which is recommended and all that. This is perfect. I like this. No, they 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 have won me over because I'm starting my free trial right now. I find these annoying though. I find the pop up chat things annoying. Yeah, I don't like it when your tomato comes up. I think it's, it's nice when the user has to click it themselves. Yeah, exactly. I just, especially when it's like that, and it comes up like on every page, even when I've like cleared it. But anyway, okay, do you have any final thoughts for this week? And then we will uh, wrap this up. And uh, if oh, you final thoughts, no, not necessarily, but I can have, I can say a couple of things that are, I can make you guys look forward to the future classes or future engagement. Please do. Yeah, so uh, I mean, I'm in future engagement, we will definitely be looking at much more interesting stuff so like, and then um, going into Webflow, show you how to do basic stuff on basic keyword sections on Webflow, and also Figma as well, converting some very simple Figma designs to Webflow. Yeah, my, my, my goal is the fact that probably you, um, for free, obviously, you could learn some basic and very important stuff about web design, and then building landing pages if you'd have to, um, helping your business gain traction. So that's the goal for this community. My uh, for my section in this community, by the way. So, and yeah, if you want to, yeah, if you have, uh, if you ha have an active member subscription, you can obviously uh, chat with John in his channel. And then, yeah. if you want some one-to-one -one support, you maybe don't need the whole site built, but you just want maybe his thoughts or to book some one-on-one -on -one time, just to have him do some of the more complex stuff on Webflow. Uh, you can use his booking link directly uh, in his channel. Uh, yeah, he'll be able to just drop in and make your site beautiful. So um, that's all from us. And uh, thank you for joining. And we'll see you next week. Yeah, thank you guys for joining. Thank you. All right, thanks, guys. Bye.